When you're building your apps, you'll very often find that if you actually type into any of the objects that you're using, parent, then you'll actually be able to see some properties of the parent that you can make use of. And I want to give you a little bit of an explanation as to what is actually happening here. Now, the very first thing to note is that the best way of understanding what the parent is for something is to actually look at the tree view hierarchy because this explains in a very visual way what the parent is for a particular object. Uh, and it tells you, you know, what you're actually going to be referring to if you if you do that. So there are different things that I would want to highlight in this area. The first thing is that you might, uh, if you put a text object onto a screen and it literally was the only thing on that screen, then the the parent to that text object would be the screen. And you could, you could take certain properties uh, from the screen, uh, but there would be limited properties. They would need to be relevant to that particular control that you're working with. On forms, you can very often see it um, in that all the cards in the forms, they will, they will kind of roll up to the overall form itself. And you can actually pull out, you can actually look at the properties of the, the form and, and in order to, to make it work better for you. Scrollable screens also have parent properties and they're worth taking a look at. And what you'll also see is galleries. That's probably a good example of something which has parent properties that are, that are very well, very well worth taking a look at. The other thing to note is that, and I've kept it separate to forms, is that the data sources themselves, when you use parent on that, you're actually, and use this parent default, it's actually the default of the data source with which you are interacting at that point in time. So it's not quite the same idea as the, uh, as the parent properties in, uh, that we're looking at straight away. And we'll, we'll get to see that later on. So we're now going to move over to the demo to see the parent properties in operation. So what we have here on screen is a really, really simple app. I've done, you know, a, only a tiny amount of effort into making this actually look uh, really nice. What I want to do is I want to highlight to you the tree view that we are looking at here. And what you can see is that if I actually expand this out, you can see that the the uh, on the screen in this browse screen one, um, we have got lots of things uh, and of which one of them is a browse gallery one. So the point here is really that label three, the parent to that will be browse gallery one and the parent to browse gallery one will be the browse screen one. Uh, so it's important to note that you can use the tree view in order to get a good guide as to as to how this will help you out. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to create a new screen. It's a nice, um, well, I'll make this, I'll make the blank screen to begin with. And, and you can see that's brought it onto the screen. What I can do is bring a label onto the screen. And really all I'm going to do is just illustrate the point that when I bring the label on, in fact, I'll just put it in, bring it on in this way, that you can see it's got width. But if I want to go on to the width of this, I could make it parent dot width. Uh, and that would make it the the parent. You know, it would literally make it the parent dot width. And then I could change the X to be a zero. It's just really an illustration that you there is a relationship between the the label and the screen it's on. So that's one thing that you could do. Now you could also go do something on the uh, let's say you could do something on the fill property, say, and you could do parent. Let's just see what we could do. Parent dot fill. Now I could change, obviously it would be the, exactly the same, but what we could do is we could make the fill property of this. Let's say we made it um, blue. It's going to be quite bright, but we'll see anyway. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted the screen. Let's go on to blue on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage this parent fill property. And I'm actually going to do, I'm going to actually say, well, actually color fade. Uh, and I will do parent.fill, parent.fill, 
and I can put in a percentage in here. Uh, so maybe I'll do is 0.8 and then close the brackets. So you can see I've actually leveraged the, uh, the parent property here. And if I change the color to be red, then you'd also see that this would would also work. So this is me leveraging a different property of my parent in order to you know have a particular effect on my uh, on my particular app. So let's reset this to um, let's reset this to light green. just so it's a bit easier on the eye. And now what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna have a little bit more of a play. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna collapse these things down and I'm gonna introduce a container because containers are quite good fun. And interestingly, because this is actually such an old app, it's actually not got the ability to bring in those containers. So I'd need to go to these settings and need to get my advanced settings. Uh, and then what I would need to do is um, bring in this layout container side of things, then move back and I should be able to bring that into my app. So this time around my search function works correctly and I can drag that onto the page. Now the reason why I brought this onto the page is because now we've got a container, but we can have a container within a container. So we can actually go and hit the plus again and we can go container. Now it can be interesting dragging these containers within each other. Sometimes you'll, you know, it'll work perfectly and sometimes it won't. I wouldn't be too concerned about it, but just bear in mind that that now these these containers can refer to each other. So um, you can have a little bit of fun here and you can actually uh, make the fill property of this and you could make it something like, we'll go with the blue again. Uh, and then you can actually on the container, you could make the fill property, the parent.fill um, parent dot fill. Uh, and we could do the same color fade idea here. So uh, it'd be color, uh, in fact, well, if you actually do something like, um, if you do uh, make this RGBA, so RG, RGBA, and then open the brackets and then do 255, 255, 255, but make this 0 0.5, something like that. Um, so close the brackets there. And so we've got the intensity there and made it slightly different. And um, so we've made, it hasn't actually had much of an effect actually. So um, yeah, there's, there's obviously something qu not quite right with that. And I think the reason here was actually that I made it 0 0.05. So if I actually made it 0 0.5, then we're actually getting the sort of effect. So you can actually sort of layer these in a slightly bizarre way um, in that you can actually put the container within inside the container. Let's see if that actually works. I did a control C, uh, I do copy and paste. You can actually see they're gradually, um, they're gradually kind of getting darker and darker as they, uh, as they kind of go through and um, so you know this is this is a way of doing things. Um, clearly, we can refer to the height and the width and and different elements in order to to make things work for our containers. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to move on to looking at galleries because actually galleries are quite you know clearly they're they're the bedrock of how we um, we make these apps of ours work. And if actually, if you look at this um, particular icon here, let's have a look at where the icon is. Um, so let's have a look at the X property. Well, it's actually at 1077. But what we could do is we could do, uh, we can actually say, well, it's parent dot width minus self dot width and then minus say a gap of about, um, let's say 20. Um, and so you can see, I know it doesn't look like much has changed here, but in fact, what would happen is if you actually move this, you can actually see that it's actually moving across. So that's kind of an interesting technique. And similarly, you could do things with the, the size of this particular um, label here. You could, you know, you could, uh, in fact, one, one thing that you, I quite often do, it's not a great example here, but you could actually center it. And so the way in which you'd center it is you'd go to the X property and you'd actually say, it'd be like, well, actually that's going to be parent dot width um, divided by two minus self dot width 
and then you divide that by two as well and that will mean that that's centered inside the gallery and the way we can tell that that's the case is that as we kind of move things around we'll actually see these are actually centered now the set text isn't centered but if the text was centered then you would see that it would actually all behave nicely um, for us there so there's a couple of ways that we can use the parent property in our app and the reason why I wanted to use this app because I knew it had a form in there and it gave me the opportunity to talk about how forms relate to the parent default side of things. So here is a form, it's on my screen here. You can see it's an absolutely terrible layout, but you know, it's kind of fun that it's, it's just done in a very hacky fashion. So it's a simple app and a very simple form that we have here. And what we can see is that we've got lots of data cards. And the real, real reason I wanted to look on the data cards is I wanted to actually look at the, the values that are sitting inside here. So the, the data card value, you can see it says parent.default. This is really, really important because parent.default really means that if it is in a new form, if there is a default setting for that field, it will pull in that default setting for that field. Uh, whereas if it is in an edit form, so a previously created document, then it will actually pull in the, the value that has been submitted for that entry previously. Now, one little trick on these forms, and I, I find this kind of frustrating in a way, is that you actually, if you want to know how this actually um, submits, then then you can see, well, you can see the data field here, uh, but there's actually an update here. And you can actually see that it then refers to this particular data card in order to, to send its data upwards. So in reality, what you can actually see is you can actually change the, tech, the, the value that's actually in this update field, that is what you are updating. And so you can actually create some very convoluted forms if you're not careful, if you don't realize that you can essentially, you know, you can actually remove the, um, that, uh, that label that you see on the screen here and you could actually populate it in a different way. Finally, I want to show you that if you uh, how you can use these scrolling screens. And in fact, it's easier for me to demonstrate in reality. So if I go insert, in fact, it's not insert. I want to put a uh, a new screen, and it's going to be a uh, scrollable screen. So what you find here is that if we go onto the tree view now, we've got these. Uh, you can see that add I add sections in. Um, I can just keep adding more and more sections um, and they will create these, well, they call them data cards and these data cards can effectively, the parent to that data card will be, will be, will be the overall scrolling screen and then the parent to that will be the, the screen itself. So it's just worth noting that this is the case. Now do be aware that with these scrolling screens, you can't actually move the elements up or down. So once you've, once you've put it in place, it's actually completely set. There's no option, uh, unfortunately, on that uh, to do that. So in fact, I'm gonna give it a bit of a go. I'm, in fact, you can't even copy it. So I'm just gonna do Control, Control C, then I'm gonna delete it. Uh, and then I'm going to try and do control V and see what happens. And actually nothing happens at all. So, so that's a bit of a shame. And um, so um, that, that wouldn't have the effect. So just be aware that if you're using these scrolling screens that, you know, you need to set your order and know what your order is going to be at a very, very early stage. Now to finish up, I just want to jump back to this form because I just want to show one particular point here. And that is when I look at a data card on a form, what I can actually do with it is like you can see the width of this particular of this particular form. So you can actually go on here and you can actually click on this and you can say, well, actually, do you know what I want? Uh, I want two columns instead. Uh, and that would have the effect of changing the width there. We don't have to be limited in that way. We could actually just say, well, actually, I want you to be parent dot width. And it's actually going to stretch all the way across the screen. So now if I actually play with it, it'll be quite interesting to see what happens when I actually go back to, to three columns. In fact, that will then override that, uh, the change in width that I actually put together there. So do be a little bit careful with that. 
So that brings us to the end of the lesson on parent properties. We saw that using the tree view hierarchy is the best way of understanding what the, what the hierarchy is to understand what your parent is. We also saw that we, we saw that screens are, are, can act as parents uh, to our objects. And we saw forms as well. There's different ways in which we could use forms. Scrollable screens are slightly a slightly unusual um, structure, but can be useful to us. Uh, we saw that we can have galleries and we can actually relate the position of objects to the width of the gallery. And we also saw that with data sources, the parent dot default was a reference to the data source. So it's not quite the same idea as some of these things where we were playing around with fill properties and width properties and so on. I hope you found this lesson useful and please, if you have any comments, do let me know down below.